Hi, today I would like to share my recent attempt at imaging Sirius B. For your information, the star Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky, located in the constellation of Canis Major. It is actually a binary star, consisting of the prominent Sirius A and a faint companion white dwarf called the Sirius B. Most people do not notice or see Sirius B when they look at Sirius through a telescope. This is because the two stars orbit each other in an eccentric orbit, which brings Sirius B as close as 3 arcseconds or as far as 11 arcseconds from Sirius A. The good news is, the next time Sirius B will be at the greatest visual separation from Sirius A will be in 2023. So, for the coming few years, you will be able to see Sirius B even through a small telescope as small as 4 inch aperture with enough magnification. So, when the sky is clear and you get your telescope ready and point at Sirius, the first thing you would like to check is the seeing condition. When you look at Sirius through the telescope, or if you have a camera attached, you should be able to see Sirius B clearly at a live view, a high zoom. For example, in this view, I'm using an APM 9-inch aperture telescope with a 3x barlow and a Canon 60D camera. At 10x zoom, this is how Sirius looks like. So the brighter one is a Sirius A and the, low, the dimmer one at the lower left corner is Sirius B. If you can see this view very clearly and very stable, then it's a good chance for you to try to capture the image of Sirius B. So, there are dif a few different ways of capturing the image of the Sirius B. The simplest way is to use a DSLR and capture the still images. In this session, I capture 30 exposure of 1 second each at ISO 1600. After capturing is done, so the next step we are going to do is going to stack these images. Unfortunately, I'm, uh, the program that I'm going to use, which is auto stacker, does not handle the raw camera format. So we will have to convert this into a TIFF format, TIFF TIFF format. So how I'm going to do it, I will be using the Photoshop, the image processor function, under script, image processor. So I select where the photos is, all the photos, and I set the output as TIFF file, and I also apply an action set which crops the image to 800 times 1200 pixels. This is because the in the image that we capture from the DSLR, the series is looks very small in the middle. So in order to um, fasten or make the stacking easier, I'm going to crop it to the smaller images. So I just run the action. So at this stage, you can actually apply some editing or enhancement on the image if you want to, for example, like this uh, sharpening or extra cross or you can just do the conversion and cropping this is going to take a while since it's uh, going to convert 30 images so we're going to skip this part for now so after the conversion and cropping is done you are you get 30 individual image of crop smaller size in TIFF format so uh, the next we are going to stack these images using auto stacker so i'm going to select all this put into auto stacker i'm going to set the angle point somewhere here covering the both the object and large the box if you want to and analyze just the alignment box i'm going to when only draw it i'll draw a big box outside covering both a small one on series b a medium one on series a you can choose to stack all the 30 images if you think the image quality is okay or you can stack fewer for example maybe 20 depends on quality of your recording and if you are shooting more than 30 images then you just uh, decide how many you want to stack in this case i'm going to stack all 30 of them so the process is done very quickly because of the small image size and also the small number of images So here is it. This is the result of stacking the, the images. You can see the image is not very sharp, so we are going to need to do some sharpening. You can either do the sharpening here inside Photoshop, or as I prefer, I'm going to do it in using Registax, the wavelet adjustment. So I'm going to open this Registax. 
So, how much you would like to sharpen is very much depends on your personal preference or taste. Some people like it to be sharper, and somebody, some people mm, prefer it to be a little bit more natural. So, usually, I'll start with layer two. Rough, a bit noisy, so I'm denoise it. I sharpen it a little bit to bring up the details. Then I head to layer one. Denoise it a little bit. Sharpen it. Then for layer 3, not so much, a little bit. Denoise it. Sharpen it. So if you are happy with the result, just do all. Wait for it to complete 100%. And save the image with a different name. So here is the one. So from here, I'm going to try to improve the image a little bit. First, I'm head to the camera raw filter to sharpen it a little bit. Next, I use the unsharp mask. If the image appear too noisy, you can denoise it a little bit. The one I usually use is the speckle. As you can see this is before, this is after. And if you zoom in, you can actually see that the, the blue channel and the red channel is not aligned properly. This is due to the chromatic aberration. For This is uh, quite common on a reflecting telescope. So I'm going to align this channel manually. You can quickly toggle between the view of different channels using a keyboard shortcut key of Control 2, 3, 4, and 5. Control 2 is going to show the full image. Control 3, the red channel. Control 4, the green channel. Control 5, the blue channel. So we can compare the position of different channels and align them accordingly. So you can see here, red, blue, red, green, red, green, red, red, green. Okay, if you are happy with the image. So for this image, the next I'm going to rotate it a little bit. This is because during imaging, I oriented my camera so that the north is to the left because I'm facing east. So I'm going to rotate this image 90 degree clockwise so that the north is up. So next, I'm going to crop this image. For this, I'm going to crop into a square shape with the series located at the center. So here is it. This is a final image. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching.